Hey everybody, it's Shannon, the Recyclista. As you can see, I'm in my garage today and I have some things that I wanted to share with you as part of the reseller's report. Um, I also, I have some updates and I have some new things to show you and it just seemed easier to do it out here where I could spread things out on a ping pong table. And um, the other reason was that weather has not been so great and my kids have been home quite a bit and they're usually out at the park with my husband and that gives me some time to um, have a little bit of quiet time in the house to make these videos so I apologize ahead of time for the lighting it's so so flattering um, also for the uh, sound I don't know if it's gonna be echoey or, or how that's gonna turn out and then also for the vertical format of this video and this is the most comfortable way for me to hold it but when I flip it around in a few minutes to show you the stuff, I'll try to fix that. So I'll try not to flip it back and forth too much. So I'm just gonna give you a quick update on some of the things I talked about on the last reseller's report. And then we will um, get on to the goods. So I have some fun things to show you today. So looking back at what we talked about last week, I'll start with these. Yes, I still have them. I do have my uh, sewing pattern counter displays, so I'll tell you what's happened so far. I've put them on Facebook. I didn't do an auction. I put them at a fixed price in a Facebook group that was specifically for collectors, and um, and it's a, a group that for rare and hard to find pieces, so people are willing to spend a little bit more. So I got some favorites and things like that, but but nobody um, purchased one. And I don't know, this could be that I'm just kind of at the point where I think these are really cool and maybe nobody else does, but I think I had listed them in there for $48 a piece. And I was gonna pay for shipping in the United States. So free shipping in the US. Um, so, you know, $40 I would get after you take out shipping, approximately, because they're only about a pound. So I um, I don't know. So after not having a whole lot of interest for a couple days, just favoriting and things like that, I decided to just move them over into my Etsy shop. And I think I did $46 in my Etsy shop. So I might just have to kind of drop the price down or run sales or something like that, promote it a little bit more. Um, yeah, I don't know. These could be, I just think we're at, like, are you going to find any others? But, you know, the condition's not perfect. So, I don't know. I'll just kind of let it go for now and see what happens. But what I did is I just put them all into one listing as a variation. And then if they bought two, it was a little bit discounted. If they buy three, it's a little bit more discounted. Um, so, we'll see what happens. I'll update you if I ever sell one. Um, anyway. So that's the deal, at least I got them listed, which is a good thing. Okay, uh, the Nolan Miller um, interchangeable necklace, I got that listed and I listed that for $35. And free shipping, I pretty much do free shipping. So a lot of the numbers that you hear, it usually includes free shipping for the United States. So if it's not, I, I'll just tell you. Um, so I did $35. For that one, I paid about five, so that that's good. And then the other thing that I got listed from last week that I talked about was that Selro bracelet with the confetti lucite. And so that was a friend of mine's, and we decided to list it at $95. And they're really collectible, and she was okay with letting it go at that price. And so we will see what happens there. So... None of those things. The other things, the 1920s green glass um, necklace, haven't gotten that listed yet. And then the copper fluss wool necklace, I haven't gotten that listed yet. I haven't done, I was doing a lot of flatware and sewing patterns this week. And so I, um, I didn't take a lot of jewelry pictures and it's nice to kind of get set up all at once for jewelry pictures and then take a bunch. And I only did a couple little jewelry pictures this week. So next week, we'll see what happens. We'll try to get those 
listed. Otherwise, they end up in a pile and then they disappear. And then I'm finding them a year from now and telling you, hey, remember this? So, okay. But what's interesting about the flatware is I did give you that little flatware tip at the end that was about um, the ones like making sure your patterns that look very similar, they have the pierced handle, the floral, all that kind of stuff. Make sure that you have you have it I identified correctly because a lot look very similar, but they're very different patterns. And the value is very different as well. So because I had pulled out that bag of flatware and a couple other bags, I listed that flatware. And the value of all the flatware that I listed last week, $140. And I sold, uh, yeah, I sold $60 worth of the flatware already. So almost half of the flatware sold already. So I tell you, flatware, I have more <laughs> to get listed. So um, anyway, so I'm going to be working on that. And then I had talked about last week and I didn't have it with me. It was the flatware guide, but I did link to it. I think you can see mine <laughs> is in well used condition, but it's the flatware guide. When I flip the camera around, I can show you better. So anyway, I thought that was kind of fun with the flatware. So I'm going to focus on flatware. I did have some good sewing pattern sales this week too, as I was listing them. Um, and I can't talk about everything that sold right now because I am talking about other stuff. But if you go into the notes below my, my website, therecyclista.com, you can sign up for my newsletter. And usually once a month, what I'm starting to do is end of the month kind of recap of some of the things that sold, my favorite sales, things that I think are a little bit interesting about what sold. So if you're interested in that at all, then you can go ahead and sign up for that newsletter. Um, and then uh, the newsletter, a lot of times I let people know about when I make another video and so on and so forth. So that's up to you if you want to sign up for that. The link to my web, my website, my blog is down below. Okay. I'm really not liking the lighting in here. Plus, it's not a great hair day. Anyway, okay. So I think I can start talking about, let me tell you where this stuff came from. So yes, no, I'm not thrifting. I did not go back to a thrift store. Um, but my mother-in-law um, has, and actually we have a storage unit at this place, but she has bought a few um, storage units abandoned storage units from the place where she has some of her storage. <coughs> Sorry, I probably should have brought water out here. Anyway, um, so she bought another one and she had asked my husband to go last weekend with her and just move some stuff around. Um, some stuff she was going to buy from him, from the owner. Um, she just needed help moving some things. And so she ended up making a deal, bought another bunch of stuff. So my husband was helping. So she, so he was also moving some of her things as well. So she was like, just, you know, take what you think is interesting. You know, if you want to research anything. And then there was like three bins of things that were, that she acquired that day that they didn't have time to like look at right there at the storage unit. And so... My mother-in-law told my husband, just take it home. You guys go through it. So what we're doing is um, we are splitting with her. So whatever we sell from these things, <coughs> that's not good. Whatever we sell from these things, we can um, split the proceeds with her. So she's a seller as well, but she, sorry, I'm opening a Gatorade. She's got her hands full right now. She's taking care of my, she's a caregiver to my father-in-law. Anyway, so she is, um, we ended up with the stuff. We researched, we kind of, it was kind of fun because we got a chance to just, you know, we haven't thrifted in so long. And so hubby and I just kind of got to dig in these newspaper wrapped items and, and stuff like that. So it was really fun. So we were very selective so that we weren't, we're not overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that we got. 
They're very selective. And then she'll probably have a yard sale at some point and we'll help her with that. Just kind of get rid of some of the other things. So let me flip it around and I can start showing you some of the things we got from that day. And then there's one more thing, a couple of things in a bin of ours that we found in our stuff. And I'll tell you the story about that in a minute. Okay, so let me see if I can flip this mid-video. Can I not? Okay, so forget everything I said earlier about flipping the camera around. Um, turns out I can't do that mid-video, which I, for some strange reason, thought I could. Um, anyway, so I'm going to just merge these two videos together. See, I'm learning something new every week. Okay, and I will try not to um, swing the camera around too much. I'll try to be really good. So, okay, so I'm starting off with the stainless spotware guide, just because it happens to be here. And now I'm going to move it. Okay, so this is one of the things that my husband pulled out and brought home. If you can see it, it's a cute little frame, it's a cute little owl. Actually, I have it the wrong way. And if you look very closely at it, it actually is a picture of an owl that the artist, there's a nice little uh, news clipping about her on the back, which I thought was really cool. So anyway, she takes pictures of owls or birds or whatever she's doing. Her name was Ruth Barrick, or is. Um, I haven't looked to see if there's a date on here or not. But she takes a picture of an owl and she cuts, as it says, every feather line on owl prints. And then she kind of layers them and makes them 3D. So it was a really cool explanation. And so this was here. And as you can see, it does. It looks really 3D. It looks so what's interesting, I don't I I don't see anything about her on the internet. Uh, I don't see anything on eBay. Um, I can search a little bit more. So that one will just be a little bit kind of a challenge. I'll just put that in Etsy, probably kind of like a folk art. That'll be my challenge this week. I'll, you know, try to come up with keywords that would get that seen by people because I think it's really cool. Anyway, um, okay, so that's that. Um, there was quite a bit of china and dishware. Some of it we didn't keep. Um, Noritake, there are certain pieces that can be really good, and but there's so much of it out there. So there was quite a few pieces of Noritake actually, but we decided not to keep those. Um, then, like, I don't do a lot of china and dishware, so this is kind of unusual for me. So if anybody sees anything that they can give any kind of thought, you know, if you have any thoughts, leave a comment below. So I do, I have sold Limoges before. This is a Limoges plate. It was in this nice little padded thing. As you can see, there's probably two of them. I think there's just two. Um, but yeah, it's very pretty. The mark on the back, you can see. So that mark there, that name Arenfeldt, C. Arenfeldt, Charles, I think. Um, when I look on eBay currently, there are only like two listings in the United States for that name with Limoges. But if you look under solds, there's like 200. So that tells me something good, right? So that it's kind of sought after. But um, look at the problem. I've got, it's faded. Certain parts of the blue lines are faded, but the rest are pretty good. So my question to the China sellers out there would those still be worth listing? I think they're pretty, but I know condition means a lot. So, I don't know. You tell me what you think. They are very pretty. Okay, so speaking of dishware, then we have just this, this little one. It's just made in Italy. Um, nothing super special about that, I don't think, but nice little, probably Etsy piece if it's vintage. If I can find another one like that and kind of figure out how old it is, you know, nothing amazing, but kind of cute for a kitchen. So we kept that one. Um, there was a few little brass pieces 
in there. And I actually have this brass bird. So now I have two more, see? Because my husband found a couple of them. So they're cute. I used to sell a lot of brass animals in my Etsy shop, but, and they have partial stickers. So anyway, Taiwan, not extremely old, but super cute birds. Maybe I'll make a little flock, let's see. And then I don't know anything about this yet. But we'll try. I don't know. It's a little stoneware mustard pot or something. Not really any markings or anything. So then, this was kind of fun. This is a little egg-shaped box. I'm going to move this out of the way. Put that over there. Okay, it's a little egg-shaped box. And we were kind of excited when we saw that it was Wedgwood. And it's a newer mark, so I knew it wasn't like an antique or anything. But it's got the Chinese dragons or the foo dogs or whatever. And so, and it's got no chips or anything like that. So I found one on Worth Point that had sold for $90. So I thought that was a good deal. I have mine listed on eBay right now for 99, I believe. Yep, like 100 and uh, free shipping. So we'll see, you just never know. I don't think that there's any others listed right now. Okay, so then there was some tea cups and saucers and things like that. And some didn't match together and some were chipped and things like that. But then my husband pulled out part of this and we were like, oh, look at that color. That's so pretty. And we were like, I hope they're both the pieces are there. And it's Ainsley, England Bone China. And it says right on there, Trillium. So anyway, I did my research on it. And you know, it's, it's okay. It's a fairly good pattern. The name Trillium, doesn't just apply to that particular pattern. There's several that have that name Trillium. I'm not sure if that's the shape or, or something like that. But um, anyway, the only problem was is there was a little tiny chip. Now I gotta find it right here. There was a chip on the rim. And then there's just in the blue of the saucer, there's a little bit of paint loss. So just not perfect and not super valuable, but um, I listed it this week on Etsy. I listed it for $30 free shipping and I figured about 10 of that would go to shipping. So I was like, if I get $20, that's, that's about right. Well, I did sell it. So I had an international buyer sell it, buy it. <laughs> so I'm still kind of waiting to see um, they're supposed to send me some other information and I had let them know that international shipping right now is very, very slow uh, due to the pandemic and the lack of airplanes flying and, and things like that and less personnel working. So we'll see. Uh, there's no mail on Monday, so I have till Tuesday to figure out whether that sale is actually going to go through. So we'll see what happens with that. But that you know, international shipping means she paid the full $30 plus international shipping on top of that. So that kind of gives me hope. And one other thing I'll mention, when I took the photo, I took the main photo straight down like that because I just thought it showed the pattern so much better. As you can see, the outside's just kind of boring white. So all the fun is on the inside. So anyway, what was funny is that I was telling my husband as we were pulling out this teacup, I was like, oh, Ainsley's one of those names to look for. I said, I don't know a whole lot about teacups and things, but I kind of pay attention if I see Ainsley and if I see Paragon. And just as I said the word Paragon, my husband was pulling these out. And this is a little open sugar. And sure enough, Paragon. So his mouth kind of dropped open because I was like, oh, Paragon. So this one is called Cliffs of Dover. It is really cool looking. 
And again, I, you know, it's not like go on a tropical vacation with the proceeds of the sales from these, but I do have the teapot and the teapot seems to be in pretty good shape. And um, I don't see any chips or anything like that. And I think that one, the teapot could be worth about $50 or so, $50, $60 I could maybe get from that. Um, there's a teacup and saucer, an open sugar, and little bread and butter plates, two of those. So this little grouping and I'll need to get those listed. I'll get those photographed this week and listed. So that's on my accountability list that I will update you next week on. But I thought they were kind of cool looking. I don't know yet the value of the teacup and saucer or the little bread and butter plates. Um, I think I saw it, but I didn't make a note of it. So like I said, nothing to write home about, but worth doing for sure. Okay, so now in the midst of all this fine china and prettiness, there was a pair of sneakers. <laughs> And we had some high hopes about these sneakers. Um, my husband grabbed them just because they're Air Jordans and you know we had sold some sneakers back in the day. But um, he cleaned them up. The other one is over. You know, I have both of them. And the laces were being, he was cleaning up the laces and stuff too. So if these were the original 1990 version that came out in 1990, then we'd be looking at a $600, $700 pair of shoes, sneakers. But he did some research. If you dig deep enough, there is a tag in there with a serial number and a date and everything, and he found out that they are reproductions. So they are like from 2011 or something like that. So they're cleaned up enough that I think he's still gonna list them and just see, you know, 30 bucks something like that we can get okay so then there was a set of flatware and if we open it I have the wrong end <laughs> okay fancy fancy gold flatware this looks like it fell out okay so this I did get listed the thing with this gold flatware can be okay there is a demand for it gold plated, we should say. There is a somewhat good demand for it. This is, um, the problem with this one, the, the brand is Cambridge, which is not my favorite brand to sell. You know, they're not super high quality. The good thing about this is that they are, it's a service for 12. There's like three serving pieces, which means there's two serving pieces missing from the regular hostess set. Um, and then there was some, discoloration like there's some plating loss there in a couple of the spoons so still worth listing um, I listed them for $65 and I think shipping plus shipping I don't think I included that because this is actually a pretty pretty heavy box so I think I did offer that if they don't want the box we can also ship it just the flatware so it's $65 plus shipping. Um, I think I found sold in that ballpark, but in, you know, in better condition, sold for like 75. So I figured if I start at 65, we can see from there how it does. But anyway, that was the flatware. The box is fairly decent. It's got some signs of wear, but Okay, then there's this box, which my husband brought in. And it's kind of cool looking. And it turns out to be a chess set. Okay, so, you know, probably made tourist market kind of thing. Um, but carved wood, and then, um, I don't know, it's not really inlay, it's kind of, carved in there too. I think, oh, what did I see? The one I saw, I can't remember if I saw one that was exactly like this or if it was something like it was representing something else. So 
more research obviously needs to be done on that, but the similar ones I've seen. So then if you look, let's see. Yeah, you pull out the drawer and the pieces are here. And I think I've counted them. I think, uh, well, I haven't counted them yet, but I think they're all here. So it's like a resin, it's like a carved resin kind of piece. So anyway, the ones I found that were similar sold for about, what did I say? Did I write it down? Like 75 to $80. For that plus shipping so we'll do that and split that with my mother-in-law and then there was some just other ottomans there's this like fun little purse i don't know if i'm gonna list that i don't know i gotta get it see if it'll clean up a little it's just got fun plastic handles and then it's just vinyl the whole thing is like vinyl so i don't know if i can clean it good enough then maybe I'll list it it's kind of cute okay and then just what I needed another typewriter <laughs> but anyway um this one's kind of cool like I said you know I had the Olivetti and or I still have it has not sold yet just as an update the Olivetti was bright red and I have done well in the past selling like turquoise typewriters and dark red typewriters and aqua typewriters so, you know, this one, the color is, you know, to me, this looks kind of military, kind of an olive green, but I do love the keys. Like they're tall, they're thick, and they're like a marbled green. They're very pretty. So, but that thing is gonna be heavy, it's metal. So we'll see. Um, I have to still do research. I have to like lift it out and try to find out the model number and which actual one it is. So we'll see if that's worth doing and shipping and, and stuff like that. It's musty stuff. Um, okay, and then there was this fun little set. Okay, it's like a little duffel bag and then a bigger duffel bag. And it's in this like awesome vintage velour. <laughs> so the maker is Molmax London. So I haven't found these particular ones yet, but I've found like purses and things listed. Um, see it, the little tag in there, made in Britain. So I think somebody would want these. What do you think? They're very 70s to me and um yeah just that fun and they're in pretty good shape they're pretty clean a little musty smelling we had them out in the sun we'll probably put them out in the sun a little bit more this week it's supposed to warm up okay so those were most of the things oh there were some other things that my husband um got but he sold already and they were just tool type things so he's been playing around with mercari and he threw little, there were some snap-on tool things, and he went ahead and sold those in pretty quickly. So we'll be splitting that with my mother-in-law too. So, okay, now there's this bin. Now this bin, the story behind this, is that I remembered I had these things, but I had kind of forgotten about them and, or where they were. And so when we moved, I didn't come across them when we were moving, but my husband must have, and he just brought the bin. There must have been some other things in there as well. But this is stuff that I sourced on another trip to Montana, like a couple years ago. Probably uh, some of the stuff was like, because we drove from Washington to Montana, so um, some of the stuff was bought in Idaho or or wherever because I see the value village tags and I don't have we don't have those in Montana so I spent three dollars on this we can hope it was a half off tag but if not I must have been pretty confident that this mid-century pattern which I will work on identifying um, it's a little ceramic pie server so hopefully 
We'll get that ID'd and listed pretty quick. Um, I think, okay, $2 for this little Ikea kids flatware set. Haven't researched that lately, so I don't know what that's worth. Um, and then I'm thinking I got this one from my mother-in-law, and I was supposed to use it. <laughs> so, isn't it cool? It's like textured aqua green goose lamp, so I think that might go in my office pretty soon if it's working. Okay, but the fun thing that was in here was, and I have, as you can see, let me count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight, nine of these. Okay, see if you can guess what they are. If you know your Pyrex and your Corning, you might know these. Okay, and it looks like I paid 75 cents. And when I bought them, no, I did not know what they were at the time. So I just knew that they were, they're marked Corning USA, made in the USA, um, trademark registered. And they have the little um, guy glass blowing. Now some people call it like he's a horn blower or whatever, but it's a Corning mark, it's a glass blower. He's blowing glass. So that's a pretty early Corning mark. So after I got home and I researched it, these are from World War II. And they are known as a military watch hand warmer mug or cup. So um, in the military, the Navy or wherever, people on watch could fill that up with their coffee, put both hands around it. There's no handle, right? And warm up their hands. They're really cool. So see how thick? It's a really thick glass. So an article I was reading about, about it said it's one of the thickest Pyrex Corning um, type things. So they started using these in World War II. Um, they might have gone on to use them like in the Vietnam War and things like that. Um, but it's kind of like a yellowish tinge, almost like a custard glass. Um, lighter than that though. Um, they're really sturdy because they were made to to work in military kitchens and and just everyday use and um, they also uh, What else did I want to say about them? There's a version also that's a little bit thinner that have that have handles Which might have been from a later date and I actually had two of those and I just recently sold them like last week um, it kind of reminded me of these, and I remember thinking, I wonder where those mugs went. <laughs> and then my husband happened to have this bin out, and I went, oh, that's where those mugs went. So, I paid 75 cents each. I have nine. They sell for about, oh, did I not write it down? 25 to $30 a piece is usually what you can get for them. Um, they're pretty collectible. So... I think I'm going to work on getting those listed this week. The ones with the handles are a little bit less. I sold two of them together for $12 each. So this one, yeah, these can go 20, 25, even up to 30 I saw when I looked at solds, but they kind of have a cool history and kind of the concept hand warmer. You'll see them listed as shaving mugs as well, but that was not their original use, but people, either use them that way or they're guessing what they are and they'll they'll list them as that so okay so that's my goal let's recap what the accountability is this week I'm going to get these listed I am going to get the Paragon China listed um, I'm going to research the Limoges and find out and ask and hopefully hear from some of you whether it's worth listing or not. I'm going to get the owls listed. Okay. Sneakers are my husband's deal. And I will get the chess set listed. Um, okay. That's my, those are my accountability items. So um, that's, I think all I have to share with you, with you today. 
So there you go. Hopefully um, you guys are doing good and you are listing and selling and we'll see you around next time.